science guy. This is a, this is the academic equivalent of waterboarding. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm petrified, but let's go. Um, so this is the sort exactly. This is the sort of question that a, a university president would logically have to ask themselves, but is uh, rarely um, able to answer. Uh, and I'm going to point to a fundamental problem in it, which I believe is the two cultures notion. Uh, elucidated by. So one, there are two polar opposites, and I think the problem is that we polarise it in this way. Is a university there to conduct research, to produce graduates, to serve knowledge economy? And this is the sort of notion that is frequently kind of applied to what one does science, scientific research for, or is, it, or is it to be a place of ideas and culture where knowledge is its own end, which frequently is just automatically associated with what happens in the humanities and social sciences. And I think that's an unfortunate polarisation which is quite destructive. Uh, to the debate within universities. And I do have a concern, actually, that the emphasis, this is a solar eclipse, mm -hmm. on the immediate <laughs> and the scientific uh, and immediate productivity of what we do in universities may eclipse the true enlightenment uh, of the underpinning ideas and culture. So uh, are the humanities and the sciences there for different purposes? Are they really, as Snow said, two cultures? Uh, or have we lost our way and unfortunately polarised the debate in a way that's unhelpful? Uh, I believe they are. C.P. Snow, of course, posed the question that there are clearly two cultures, he said, because I understand Shakespeare, but nobody understands the second law of thermodynamics. I put this famous question to the man, but well, the truth is very few scientists know much about the second law of thermodynamics, first of all. Uh, and secondly, one can think about the second law, which is, of course, that you know, the entropy in the universe, uh, the disorder in the universe increases towards a maximum. That was how it was first. Uh, Cardinal Newman might put it differently, that there's another sort of chaos to which one might return. And my favourite, of course, is Jose Saramago, which is everything goes back to its beginning, everything returns to chaos. So even though we don't all understand the second law of thermodynamics, we all have an intuitive sense of the ideas that underpin it. Equally, so Sarah here could have responded to C.P. So and said, well, what do you really know about intertextuality? <laughs> Simply because we don't understand the detailed technical language underpinning our disciplines, don't mean that there's some sort of intellectual divide between what the different disciplines are doing. So I believe in a formal sense that the divide between the humanities and sciences is meaningless and is an unfortunate distraction in the debate about what universities are really for. But I love the Saramago quote, I have to come back to it. There are people like Senor Jose everywhere who fill their time, or what they believe to be their spare time, by collecting stamps, coins, medals, vases, postcards, matchboxes, uh, books. The quote goes on. <laughs> Lots, sports shirts, autographs, stones, clay figurines, empty beverage cans, little angels, cacti, opera programs, lighters, pens, owls, music boxes, bottles, bonsai trees, paintings, mugs, pipes, glass obelisks, ceramic ducks, old toys, carnival masks. And for a short while, they manage it. But only so long as they are there to defend their collection. Because when the day comes when it must be dispersed, and that day always comes, either with their death or when the collector grows weary, <laughs> everything goes back to its beginnings, everything returns to chaos. That, of course, is the second law of thermodynamics in one interpretation. But I think what he's talking about here is the constant human struggle to, to place some order on the universe. And I think the one thing that lasts are his collections return to chaos. This is the modern realist painter Mark Tanzi, it's called The Bricolaire's Daughter. It's the most evocative uh, picture of a collection I could find. The collection that lasts is the collection of human ideas and human culture. And it doesn't matter really which discipline is producing the ideas and the culture, it's actually the struggle to understand the universe. This is entitled The Short History of Modern Painting. <laughs> well, so by Mark Tanzi. It's not just the ideas and the culture that they feed into, irrespective of discipline, but the actual struggle to understand. So my thesis is the divide between humanities and sciences is meaningless. It's the struggle to understand the ideas and artifacts we create, whether they be lasers or paintings, and the culture we preserve and regenerate. They have meaning. And to nail home the point that, that I think we can bring the humanities and social sciences together, you think this is the Wright brothers. Of course it isn't. It's Picasso and Braque. This is not an aircraft, it's a classic cubist collage. I, I'm sticking with Mark Tanzi on this one. Here's another example of mixing. This, of course, is a love song. It's by a uh, lamb shop. Uh, but of course, it is expressed in the language of geographical science. This is my metaphor of the month uh, at the moment. And I think the, 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 the fundamental idea, is, and of course, it is a love song because I guess love uh, is the one final attempt to understand the great unbridgeable gap between self and other that defies much understanding. So, what is a university for anyway? It's the place of struggle. It's the place where we struggle to, to comprehend, where we do love, 
Uh, what we love is ideas and culture. And the reason for it is because these things make them human, make us human. It's not to suggest that all of the other wonderful benefits that flow from our work, uh, the, the employability, the economics, it's not to suggest they're not important. It's just they're second order benefits, and they're only sustainable if the first order vitality is in place. Thanks, Leah.